Good morning, I'm Gioia Giuliani, a PhD student from the University of Trento, and I'm going to present the experimental investigation on steel frame equipped with these replaceable components. The Disrobable Project, which stands for Fully Dissipative and Disrobable Devices for Resilient Buildings with Composite Steel Concrete Structures, it's a RFC project with the aim of testing steel concrete composite frames equipped with three different types of dissipative components. In the project, two different experimental campaigns will be carried out, one for the shaking table test at the University of Athens and the other for the habit testing at the University of Trent. The first component to be test is the DRBRC, which constitutes the connection between the bracing and the column. The only dissipative element of the component is the pin, which behaves in bending and in shear. The final component capacity is reached when the plastic hinges are fully developed in both the external and internal plates. As you can see from the hysteretic cycle, it undergoes to a significative pinching effect due, due to the body, uh, bodization of the holes of the pin. The DRLF system is made up of two parallel columns connected by reduced section beams. The behavior of the system could be represented as a pyramidal beam, where the columns are subjected to a strong axial force component, while the beam links work mainly in bending or in shear, depending on their length. The beam is typically weakened at the ends to force the formation of the plastic hinges at those locations. The replaceability of the device um, uh, is guaranteed since they are connected to the columns through bolts and they are not part of the gravity load bearing system. The last component under investigation is the RBS that was intended to be used in a moment resisting frame, weakening the composite beam in order to localize the plastic hinges close to the beam column joint. As it can be seen from this figure, from this figure, this um, was achieved by interrupting the steel profile in, and the concrete slab and restoring the continuity with the fuse plates on the web and on the flange of the steel profile. The reinforcement bars of the concrete slab are, uh, were continuous to the gap and they were over-designed as they have to remain into the elastic field. The replaceability was ensured as the web uh, and the flange plates were bolted to the beam profile. Because of the geometric configuration and different material properties, the monotonic behavior of the device is characterized by a strong non-symmetry, as it can be seen from this figure. The three components have been modeled with two different types of material model in the finite element software open source. For the RLF system, the constitutive load chosen was the book one model. Uh, whilst for DRBRC and DRBES, the pinching for model was uh, adopted since it, it allows for considering both the non symmetric constitutive relationship and the pinching effect of the devices. The experimental campaign proposed is to test five different buildings. In the case studies were composed by two spans in the transversal x, -x direction and um, and three span in the longitudinal epsilon direction and six stories. The design of the three building was conducted according to the ERO codes. As uh, the RFCS project goal is to test full scale uh, structures in order to demonstrate the effectiveness and the replaceability of the component and due to the laboratory constraint, substructure technique was employed to divide the structure into a numerical subdomain and a physical subdomain. The two-dimensional models were developed under the hypothesis that the mass and the base shear distribution are proportional. Due, due to the laboratory constraint, a maximum of two degrees of freedom can be controlled with two actuators. So, as it can be seen from this picture below, for the, air, for the DRF frame, there is an actuator on the floor level and a second actuator is located at the mid height of the second floor. This was done to control the bending moment in the column. In order to validate the reduction from the 3D building to the 2D frames and to the subtraction one, model pushover and time history analysis were uh, conducted. As it can be seen from the results in terms of fundamental periods, the procedure was validated concerning the model analysis. Here, the comparison in terms of pushover analysis were reported. As it can be seen, the three levels of modeling are in good agreement. 
For the time history comparison, several accelerograms were used to evaluate the nonlinear behavior of the structures and to compare um, and to compare the three uh, level of modeling. The errors computed were in terms of dissipated energy uh, in the wall building and the and force developed by the device, for which two indicators were employed. Um, the first one, NE and ERR, provide indication on the amplitude error, error while the NRMSE gives information on the frequency error between the two data sets. Those are cycles of the dissipative component uh, from the time history analysis performed on the DRLF uh, frame. Concerning the laboratory layout, a truss system was adopted to laterally brace the frame so as to prevent any out of plane instability and an external and an external beam elements at the floor level are used to impose the same displacement at each column. The experimental tests that will be conducted at the University of Trento are performing displacement control. One or two hydraulic actuators will be employed to perform hybrid simulation. The actuators are connected to a numerical controller that imposes the displacement, which is calculated with the G alpha algorithm. Here you can see an overview of the G alpha algorithm that was implemented. In this case, the equation of motion are written uh, in state space form so that the generalized displacement uh, y is formed by the displacement u, the velocity v, and the additional state vector s. While in the restoring force r, we can also find the nonlinear function g, which models the evolution of the additional state vector s. The partitioned math method consists in partitioning the spatial domain into totally disconnected subdomains, where Lagrange multiplier were used to enforce the compatibility of the interface nodes. Concerning a generic load step, the two subdomains are solved separately as two completely different structures. Then a link solution is computed by means of the Lagrange multipliers. Looking at the question of motion written in the canonic form, the particularity of the hybrid testing is that the contribution of damping and mass is numerically simulated for both the numerical substructure and the physical sub substructure in the PC, while the restoring force is read from the controller for the physical subdomain and numerically calculated uh, for the numerical subdomain. Going deep on the experimental campaign for the DLLF milestone system, just structure was subjected to three different limit states. The goal of the campaign was to investigate the behavior of the frame at each limit state and to test the replaceability of the device after the significant damage earthquake. The accelerograms were chosen based on the spectral compatibility and the minimum error between the wall frame and the substructured one. At last, also the structural performance was evaluated in terms of agreement between the limit states and the energy dissipated from the devices. Due to laboratory constraints, the model was reduced to a simplified one with only seven degrees of freedom with a function of shear type deformation of the structure. A displacement control analysis was performed by imposing a cyclic displacement at the top floor of the reference model. The seven nonlinear springs at the test model were calibrated on the results of the cyclic analysis. The laboratory setup of the test is here reported. 10 beam sections were instrumented with both displacement transducer and strain gauges. On each instrumented section, the strain at the upper and the lower edge of the beam link section uh, was measured. Then the bending moment was estimated by calculating the curvature of the beam link section in an elastic region of the beam. The bending moment of the RBS was obtained by interpolating. For the rotation estimation, the displacement at the upper and lower <coughs> edge of the RBS was measured, and the rotation computed as the ratio between the displacement difference and the section A. Those are the comparison in terms of base shear and top floor displacement between the habit test and the open cyst reference model at the damage limitation limit state. Here, the same comparison are reported for the significant damage limit state. And for the near collapse limit state, as you can see, for the three limit state, there is a good agreement between the reference model and the hybrid test. The results in terms of local behavior are depicted for one selected RBS. 
At the damage limitation limit state, no yielding was observed, while at the a significant damage limit state, the uh, maximum bending moment exceed the um, resisting elastic bending moment as expected from the numerical simulation. The near collapse limit state results for the selected RBS are reported both in terms of bending moment history over time and the hysteretic cycle. In, it can be noticed from the loop that the device dissipated a huge amount of energy and that we uh, had plastic deformation highlighted by the residual displacement, the residual rotation. Here there is a short video of the near collapse limit state test. In conclusion, uh, the numerical calibration of the components' high behavior showed a good agreement with experimental data. The procedure conducted demonstrates that the 2D substructure well represent the global behavior of the 3D building. Uh, going deep into the uh, experimental campaign for the DRLS system, uh, we, we got that the system performed as expected for DL and that's the limit states that were the limit states at which the structure were de was designed. The substitution of the IPA beams occurred without any particular problems. Thank you for your attention. Uh, any questions?